I'm the author of Fair Park Deco and DFW Deco, two books about uh, modernistic architecture in Dallas and the North Texas area. My interest in Fair Park really started because of the, the state fair and, and things like that. But when we got to Fair Park, we realized that there was so much here. And we both were aware of it, but we didn't know how rich it was and, and just how much there was to talk about. Once we got into it and started researching it, we realized what an amazing place it is. When you walk around Fair Park today, you, you do get a sense of what an incredible place it is, just, just in terms of the art and architecture and the things that are here. Um, you also see spaces where you know things were. I think even the casual visitor might realize that there used to be more to Fair Park than there is now. Um, so it's this weird combination of, isn't this fantastic and I'm so excited and I really wish that some of the old stuff were still here. And I understand why it's not, but you can still wish for what you don't have. It's always been interesting to me to see how history and architecture meet and how architectural styles change and the kind of buildings that we build change. What's really interesting about Art Deco to me is it's kind of the beginning of what we would consider modern architecture for one, but it's also the end of uh, the period where they were really doing highly decorated architecture and, and making sure that there was art in buildings and this, this combination of craftsmanship and architecture that after the 1930s you just didn't really see anymore. So it's really glamorous, it's really fun to look at, it's really colorful, um, so it's, it's, it gets your attention. David Dillon, the, the architecture critic, um, said the centennial was basically like a huge coup for a city that thrives on self-promotion. And the centennial was, was great for that because you had this, this huge modernistic exposition ground that people could come see. It made, you know, it was a real shot in the arm for Dallas to have all this activity and this employment and, and all these tourists coming in. So people came here, they saw what looked like a modern city, they saw a bustling city that did not look like it was in the middle of a depression. Um, there are people who wrote at the time the centennial was being built and they said, you know, this reminds us of what it was like before the crash in 1929. So that's the important thing to remember about Fair Park is it's the only 1930s exposition ground that still exists, you know, to, to any real extent. I mean, we, we have 60% of the buildings here and that's incredible because, you know, there was the New York Fair, the San Francisco Fair, smaller ones like Cleveland, San Diego, um, none of those, none of those are around. The Chicago World's Fair, not a trace of it. So the fact that we have anything here, and, and, and that's why, you know, when I talk about the experience is degraded because this is gone and this is gone, that doesn't mean it's not fantastic because it is. And, and to be able to come and walk around and get any sense of what it was like to attend, um, th this is the only place that you can do that. And, Fair Park doesn't exist because people thought that was cool. They, people were not always that excited about it. I mean, within a year or two after the centennial closed, the city was trying to put expressways through the park and, and there was a plan to put an expressway directly in front of the Hall of State and it would have had an underpass that would have started basically at the, at the front steps. It wasn't until 1986 with the sesquicentennial that there was really renewed interest in, in what was out here and they started really trying to get money and, and get, um, I guess, momentum behind doing restorations. And then that led to uncovering art and restoring statues and, and restoring buildings. And you know, a lot of the buildings were on the verge of collapse in the 80s, which I think a lot of people don't know, um, but it was in really bad shape. So it's come a long way. For that reason, the future is tough because I think Fair Park is a great civic asset. I think it's something that a lot of cities would kill for, but that doesn't mean it's easy to figure out what to do with it. From a personal perspective, the reason that I like to learn about history is because I like to learn the stories, the, the motivations, the stories behind why people did things. And, you know, from an architectural standpoint, it's why was a building designed the way it was built or, or, or how did it end up looking the way that it looked. But just anything, you can look at the stories behind it, you can, you can try to understand where people came from, and you start to understand these were people just like us, and these were, these were people who had the same, you know, faults and fears and, and the same misconceptions and the same optimism and, and whatever you want to say. It's easy to look at history as something that's really dusty and something that was, oh, these people did this years ago and it's just something to read about. But it's another thing when you really get involved in it and you start to learn about the stories and, and it's, not, it's not just a collection of words on a page. It's the personal histories of the people who made history. That's what I like.